So I've been working on this new geometry node setup in Blender recently. I've been trying to recreate the effect we see in the Foundation TV series intro, where we sort of see these objects being built by sand as it sort of gets blown in. And so I've been able to recreate this effect largely using entirely geometry nodes. And so the nice part about that is that it's super simple, easy to set up. And so as you can see here, We've got our basic scene, we've got our background, we got our light, and we got our object we're gonna sandify. And so we're gonna set up our scene, we're gonna go, we're gonna make sure we're in cycles, and that we have GPU compute turned on if we do have a GPU. If not, don't worry, it's not too much of a deal. If you don't have a GPU, don't worry. This actually uses Blender's point cloud rendering system, so it is super duper quick, even if you are just running this on a CPU. And so, yeah, I've got 128 samples. That's all we'll need. And I set us to medium high contrast just to add a bit more of a cinematic flair. Okay, and with that, we're gonna go. We'll add in our Sandify geometry node tree. Come in here. And before we actually apply it to our object, the first things we're gonna do, we're gonna go to our object, we're gonna apply the rotation, and apply the scale. You want to apply both of those so the effect works correctly. You don't necessarily want to apply your location because the origin of the object is actually used for part of the effect to determine some of the parameters. And so with that, we'll go here, add in our Sandify Geometry Node modifier. And as you can see here, we're in our camera view we're sort of stretched along this x-axis here. And if you look over here in the interface, you'll see the build direction has an empty slot. So we're gonna go create an empty, I'll make a sphere, just a little easier to click on. And the angle between this empty and the world origin will control basically where we build our object from. And so you can see, we'll put it like right there. Come in here, select our empty, and now as you can see, as we move this around, it sort of controls where we get built from. Now, if we come into here, that's a nice spot. We'll set our face density higher, say 500, maybe a radius of like 10, just to keep it easier to visualize. And now we've got our build slider. And so the first thing I like to do, I like to set this fall off really high. Let's make it say 40 for now can adjust our build accordingly. And yeah, as you can see, it's already looking kind of cool. We got that sort of blown away look. And you can also adjust this incoming direction here. So this will control basically where the sand comes in from, like which direction, whereas the empty controls sort of which direction we actually build the object from. And so for here, I'm gonna adjust, I'll put it a little bit to the side towards the x-axis a bit more and you can adjust this magnitude to sort of give another layer of customizability to the sand forming effect and now this is where it gets really cool we can add turbulence and this really sells the actual like wind effect we'll set our turbulence strength something like real high like i don't know say like three and a half and then if you have our turbulence threshold here, and so this basically tells us, okay, relative to the object's origin, okay, at what distance do we actually start distorting the point's position? And so for this, we'll set it something like maybe 1.15. I'm actually gonna adjust my build a little bit so that way we get more of a plume falling off. There we go. Yeah, you can see right there, that's about a good spot. You can adjust the strength. I usually like a two, two and a half is pretty good. And adjusting the scale, turning that down a little bit can be really nice. Yeah, like there we go, like a 0.3. Slide our roughness down a touch. And there we go. We've got that. One other thing we can adjust is our culling radius. This basically just deletes all the points outside of a certain area. And so if you have a point that you can't see in your camera, you can just go ahead and delete that. It saves even more time on rendering. And as you'll see soon, it renders super quick anyway. We're talking like less than 30 seconds on my laptop. And yes, now let's jump over to shading. Go. 
And as you can see, our points are still pretty big, so let's go and jump. We'll turn our radius down to, say, 2. And then we can crank up our density to, like, 5,000. And there we go. As you can see, that's already pretty good. One last thing we can add. And you do have to be careful with this because it's easy to overload your machine. But the volume density for something like this can add an extra level of depth and make it feel like your object is even more of like a solid brick instead of just sort of the exterior shell, which is what we're treating it as by having our points on the face of the object and not just filling the entire object. And so then if we come here, we can adjust and we can switch. And you can actually see if we have it just with the volume fill, we still get this really cool effect and it also really softens it out. So you can use that for things as well. But for this, we just wanna fill it up, make it look like a solid brick object. And there we go. And I really like this gold sort of sand material. You can adjust the material down here at the bottom. And yeah, it looks pretty nice. We'll render our image. And as you can see, this is moving super quickly especially considering this has like probably a hundred something thousand points inside of it. If we tried to render this all by like instancing subdivided icospheres, that's the old trick to do it, it would be much, much longer on the render times. Yeah, so you can see we're finalized. 23 seconds for a frame. And you can come in here. I usually like to add a little glare in the compositor. But yeah, you can do whatever you like with this. You can use it on any model. Even if the model isn't like closed, you can still use the volume fill. And so I hope you guys found this really informative. Thank you for watching and thanks for checking this out.